Hello, good morning. Welcome to our Vita Church service this morning. We hope that you are having a fantastic bank holiday weekend. If you are visiting us and you've clicked on this video for the first time, my name is Lloyd and I'm going to be hosting us through our service this morning. And the kind of structure of our service, we're going to move through to a time of worship and then we're going to hear from our pastor, Chris. But before we do that, we like to pray and it's important that we hold God at the forefront of our minds as we come together as family, as church. And um, I thought that we could start in the scriptures and I've actually uh, got some verses from the Psalms this morning. So it's Psalm 25, 4 to 10. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. So let's pray. Lord, we want to know your ways. Would you teach us your ways? I pray that as a body of believers, we would remain humble that we would lean on you and on your understanding, that we would be a people that trust and hope in you and in your leading. So Holy Spirit, we welcome you in our service. We welcome you here this morning. We welcome you into our homes, and we welcome you into wherever we're watching this this morning. Would you come, Lord? Would you come and touch us and fill us? Holy Spirit, come. Move us in your ways, Lord. Remember not the sins of our youth or the sins of yesterday or even the sins of today. Lord, we fall at your feet and we just say, would you take our sins? Would you take those things from us? And now, Lord, as we lift you up, would you be exalted today? Would you be exalted in worship? We trust and we hope in you, Lord, the Lord of all, King of kings, majesty. Amen. Uh, 
Lord, all those things are true of your name. You are a way maker. You are a miracle worker. You're a promise keeper. And you're the light in the darkness. Lord, we, we praise you for all those things, all the things that you are to us because we put our trust and our hope in you. Amen. Amen. And so now we are going over to Chris, our pastor, for our message this morning. Morning, everyone. Welcome to this part of our Sunday service. I thought this morning we'll speak from one of our beautiful parks in Brighton. The sun is shining. It is almost feeling like summer. If you haven't watched or come to our service before, my name is Chris and I'm the church pastor, the pastor of Vita Church. A warm welcome to our church family here and those of you watching um, in different countries even. It's just great to be able to communicate this way. I want to share a bit of theology today, something from the Bible. I want to look at Romans chapter 5 where Paul is speaking about peace with God. He's speaking about the grace of God. So let me just start in what he says. Therefore, he says in Romans chapter 5 verse 1, in fact, whenever there's a therefore, you want to see what it's there for and go back a bit. Um, but let's start with, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. Let's just start with the first couple of verses there. And um, therefore, we've been justified through faith. Paul's outlining the uh, what Christ has done. And justification, what that means, it's a judicial word. It means that we've been found not guilty. It means that before the court of heaven, before the judge of all the earth, we are, you know, that, that uh, you know, the hammer goes down, not guilty. You know, I've, I've only ever seen someone sentenced once. It wasn't a, a great experience for me to watch at all. But the, the power that, a, that an English judge has when someone is found guilty and you walk in, you're free. You walk in, you're, you, you've you know, just gone for a coffee, you've just had breakfast somewhere, whatever you've been doing and you come before the judge and the judge says you're guilty and gives an account of what you've done and then sentences you and that's it, your freedom is taken away and you're going to prison. That's the power of the judge. Well, one day we'll face the judge of all the earth. And as Christians, as believers, you're found not guilty. I just, just think about that for a moment. Because we, we, we think about our sin a lot, don't we? We think about what we've done wrong. We, we, we allow the enemy to condemn us for what we've done. But God says, no, you're justified. And that's what he's saying. We are justified through faith. We have peace with God. And that means that we can call God a friend. And we need to keep coming at this because the enemy keeps coming at us. Peace with God. And that peace means that we, we're, we're friends um, with God. The way that it's put, um, I'll read to you from Ephesians chapter 2. But it says that like the rest, we were built by nature deserving of wrath because of his great love for us. God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in our transgressions. And Paul is saying it again here. There's no reason, there's no reason that we should have peace with God were it not for what Jesus Christ did on the cross 2,000 years ago. That is the only reason. And so there's no enmity. When the judge puts, puts the hammer down, it's, uh, the, you know, Jesus, our advocate, will be there. You're not guilty not on the basis of what we've done, but on the basis of what he's done and our acceptance of his blood covering our sin. That's what Paul is saying. That's why Christianity is good news. We're no longer objects of wrath. And you say, I don't want to hear about the wrath of God, but that's where we were before. God had this kind of eternal problem. He had a massive problem with human beings. He loves us. He wants to rescue us. He, he wants to bring us into his kingdom. But God's innate response to our sin is wrath. It's anger. It's justifiable anger over everything to do with our behavior. But God so loves us, he's come down, he's, he, he's paid for our sin. And, and here we then have peace. So the, the wrath of God, if you like, has been averted and taken 
by Jesus. It's taken by God. Remember, that's a, a trinity working, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. It isn't like the, you know, somehow the Father hates us and Jesus has rescued us or something. No, this is the work of the Father and the Son and the Spirit together to redeem human beings just like you and me. And so he says, um, with that, we've gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we probably or maybe not, but grace is just unmerited favour. We have unmerited favour with God. Unmerited favour, unmerited grace, something that we haven't earned. We, we, we hate that as, as people living in the 21st century. We, we want to earn something. We, we look at ourselves and we think, well, you know, if, if I want to, to do a job, I need to pass exams, I need to work hard, I, I need to uh, do something. But where God's concerned, we were dead in our transgressions. And whilst we, we had nothing, whilst we deserved nothing, he came after us. Now, that gives me confidence, not in me, but in him. And that's what I wanted to give to you this morning. Have confidence. God has saved you. You are justified. That means your sins are gone. You have peace with God. That means you can approach him. Now, in the, in the old days, with the old gods, remember, they were capricious. You were always appeasing gods. I think it's in Ice Age, one of the cartoons that my daughter I was watching, and the, I can't remember the little creature who was so pleased. He was welcomed into the community. He was lifted up as a king. He was all of this. And then they were going to sacrifice him to the volcano, you know, because that's, that's their view of God. That, that is not an uncommon expression of how in the ancient world these capricious gods were viewed. You were always going to upset them. And, and when you upset them, they've got it in for you, you know, they're going to curse you and make your life difficult. The, the Christian God, our Father in heaven, is so different. He is so different. He's not like that at all. God has paid the price for us. Jesus has paid the price. You're not guilty, right? Just say, say it with me. I am not guilty. My sins will not be counted against me. That's what Paul is saying here. That's the truth of Christianity. That's why it's great to preach. That's why it's good news. And then he says, we boast in the hope of the glory of God, but not only so, we glory in our sufferings. And, and, and it's, it's well, all right, we've, we've got all this grace, we've got peace. And yet here's Paul, you know, mentioning, mentioning suffering and mentions why. He says, we glory in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character and character, hope. In other words, <coughs> you're going to suffer somewhere in life. The only place of growth in my Christian life has come through suffering. And you will find it's the same with you. And that when we suffer, we get bitter or better. I remember John Wimber saying early on, and uh, when he was doing his degree, he had a placement and he was sent to an old people's home of aging pastors. And so John Wimber would go to this old people's home. He was a young man and he noticed these elderly pastors that you would expect to be full of grace and mercy were bitter angry people. And the truth is that life can take it out of you and um, you can uh, become really either bitter or better um, through suffering. But suffering is part of life and almost designed by God I suppose but it's to make us better. Remember 1 Peter 5, I think, 5, 6, where Peter says, cast all your anxieties, cast everything on Jesus who loves you. And that's the only place we can go to in suffering. Suffering we understand sometimes and suffering we don't understand. As we place all of that on him, then in that, that begins to change us. Uh, it produces perseverance and perseverance character. And character here is being formed. It, it's something that forms us. It's something that shapes us. Um, in Timothy, in 2 Timothy, Paul writes and, and uh, speaking to his young son in the faith, he talks about different vessels. And he, he says that in a large house, there are vessels of gold and silver um, and wood and clay. Some are for special purposes and some are for common use. And the truth is, the Christians we most admire, the, the Christians like Corrie ten Boom that I just look up to and revere, 
well, she was in a concentration camp. She saw her own sister die, and, and that would break most people, but she came out glowing, radiant, full of Jesus, wanting to share the good news. And, and that's what suffering is, is meant to produce in you and me. It is part of life. Um, I, remember, I, I remember David Parker said it when I, I, was, I was young. He, he said, never preach that life is easy. Never preach life is easy because everyone will know that you're lying. Now, I don't know what suffering you're going through, but give it to him. Place it all on him. And over time, as you persevere, giving it to him, giving it to him. You see, it's, it's the opposite of what we think. We, we want to alleviate suffering in some way. We like to medicate suffering. We, we want to choose the, you know, the house in the sun. We want it to be easier, but it isn't. And it will produce in you and it will produce in me something of the glory of God. And so this character, which is us being formed, is then hope. And hope is certain in the Christian life, as you know. It produces a hope that says, one day I'm going to be with him forever. My hope isn't hopelessness as the world faces. And, and so many people, as you know and I know, the world, we, we, we put out, uh, they, or they, oh, it's so easy to put your trust. Maybe it's in your family. Maybe it's in the value of your home. Maybe... It's, 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 it's something, your religious degree, maybe it's your education, the school you went to, but your hope, it'll all become hopeless. Because as we enter, if you're fortunate, the closing hours and weeks of your life, then one day you'll be promoted to glory, to being with him forever. And that's the purpose really of life is that, that to be formed this word character which is so important that our character um, is, is formed by Christ and, and it's to do with formation um, from the Greek and it's, it's really to do with um, you know when you look at people who have character they've persevered through difficulty they've made good choices uh, through difficulty uh, when they could have made other choices and really that's what it's all about. And it says it doesn't put us to shame because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that he's given us. God's love's been poured into our hearts. It's awesome, isn't it? The Christian life. It's amazing that this love, this perfect love, has been poured out. And so it doesn't disappoint. You know, I, I don't know what you're going through. And, and, it, and it can be tra trauma, it can be anxiety with what's been going on. It can be a family member that you're, you're struggling with and, it, and it's hard. It could be someone who's betrayed you. There are so many different aspects and areas of suffering in this life. And yet with all of these different areas, it's to produce something. And it doesn't disappoint, he says. Hope, hope is never going to be put to shame. Your hope in Christ, others may mock it. Others may think you're stupid. Others may think lots of things, but it will never be put to shame because one day you're going to meet him face to face and welcomed into the kingdom of God forever and ever. It's a great, it's a great plan of God and a great deal. And I'll close with this in verse six. He says, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, someone might possibly die. But God demonstrates his love for us in this. Whilst we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Whilst we were hopeless, Paul says the word here, and um, powerless in the NIV, when we were still powerless. It's, it's um, the same word, um, astenos, it's weakness. When we were, we, we, we were absolutely powerless. You, you imagine, a, you know, if, if you've ever raised a baby, when they, they come out of the womb, they, they can't move their limbs, they can't do anything or talk, they're absolutely powerless. You and I were powerless and God came and rescued us. That's salvation and that's justification. He, 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 he has taken your sin upon himself and it's gone. And he's done that not because of the efforts that you and I have made in kind of to stretch out to him and try and be good and try and be better. No, he's done it whilst we were still powerless. Salvation is an absolute 100% gift. 
And so I want to close there just with, with those things today, just to remind us of those things, that God is forming you and shaping you and putting hope in you and putting character in you as a Christian, that he's justified you and that one day he'll welcome you. That's the good news that we believe in. That's the good news that we follow. So that's all I have to say this morning. Um, for those of you, um, I think you're aware, we are meeting now in person at Baswick. As and when you're able to come back, please do. I hope uh, you've got something from our service today. And let's just sp spend just one or two minutes just, just focusing on our Lord and drawing near to him. So Lord, I pray for those who are suffering right now or the areas in which they're suffering right now they're able to hand it all over to you. Just hand it over to him, hand it over to him, hand it over to him. And as you do that, again and again and again, he wants to take it on, off you and onto him. And so, Lord, we give it all to you. We give it all to you that joy and your love may be the things that radiate through us. So in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace to love and to serve our world. Amen.